Today we'll be revisiting Shangri-La 4,341 days later. I apologize in advance if I look extra, I don't know, like red in the face or just kind of like bleh overall. Today's shaping up to be one of the hotter days in Florida and I'm feeling it already. Anyways, here we are on one of the most polarizing maps in Zombies history. Back in release, Shangri-La, you know, the reception to it was a bit mixed compared to the previous maps and that's just kind of how it's been for this map up to this day. You have the people that absolutely love this map and then you have the people that are like, eh, I'll play this this map but it's not one of my favorites i don't know if there's anyone that downright hates this map but you know it's definitely not one of the favorites for most zombies players for me personally i've always loved this map i don't know if it's something about the vibes the location the aesthetic the unique wonder weapon the unique zombie types there's just i've always had a special place in my heart for this map though i can admit compared to the maps that came before it and especially the maps that came after it yeah sure it may not be one of the strongest maps in the zombies lineup but that being said you cannot deny that it is one of the most unique unique that we've gotten. I mean, seriously, it takes place in the legendary Shangri-La jungle, and when you look at, like, you know, the aesthetics of the map in terms of how vibrant and saturated the map is, it truly is unique, and it's just completely different from anything else that we had gotten in Zombies up to that point. Granted, there are some annoying aspects about this map that we will talk about and touch on for sure. That being said, through and through, I genuinely do love this map for the most part. Now, if there would be one thing that I would have to, like, point my finger at and be like, eh, I don't really like that aspect of the map, it's definitely, like, the booby traps and the way that they can kind of like mess you up when you're running through the map. Sure, I kind of like the fact that they add a bit of a added challenge to the environment and traversal of the map. That being said, I really don't appreciate it when, you know, I'm on like round 40 or round 50 and my run just suddenly ends because I ran through a doorway at the wrong time and what do you know, spikes went up, I was trapped, zombies swung at me and that's that. My round 50 game is just now over. <laughs> Granted, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I've never hit round 50 on BO1 Shangri-La, but I have on Black Ops 3 Shangri-La. Sadly enough, that story was true. I was running through the map. I was trying to go back to buy Quick Revive because I had gone down. It was like round 51. And I was doing it mid-round. So I was like, hey, you know what? I'll probably be safe, right? Nope. I ran through here. The spikes came up. I, just like this. I, it was literally just like this. I got caught by the spikes. Zombies started swinging at me. And that was that. My run was just over. There's also another area in this map where a similar thing tends to happen to me quite often. You probably know which one I'm talking about where it's like the floor moves and there's like walls that pop up in the little like swampy muddy area. Like, yes, I understand what they were going for and I understand the purpose of those things but it's just like man sometimes it just gets in the way more than anything you know what i mean but for the most part like i said i genuinely do love this map oh yeah a ballistic knife because you know that's exactly what i wanted and needed at this current point in time thankfully we we're on oh wow that was actually perfect so now we have ballistic knives and a double point so let's just go ahead and revel in the money okay greedy You know what? As much as I dunk on the ballistic knife, that was actually really satisfying. I went from broke to having thousands of points in just a few seconds. You know what? GG, ballistic knife. Yeah, fail. Eh, yeah, sure. Why not? So normally in this series, you know, we kind of talk about things that the map added, that it took away. But in this instance, there really wasn't that much that changed. I mean, sure, the location is unique. And sure, they added the new zombie types like the Shriekers and the Napalms. But outside of that, there wasn't too much added. Uh, they added the new Wonder Weapon, which is cool. You know, the Baby Maker, you shoot the zombies, you run into them and send them fly. Lion. They also had an interesting system for Pack-A-Punch on this map, so basically you have to look for like these little piles on the floor, and then you have to stand on them. Thankfully, in solo, you only have to find one of them, you stand on them, Pack-A-Punch is open, that's that, but in co-op, it's a bit more tricky than that, but as you can see, you know, this tile is standing up. I'm not gonna step on it right now because I don't need Pack-A-Punch. I'm gonna wait until we have enough money to actually Pack-A-Punch before I do that. I would preferably also like to try to find Jug before I even worry about that because, eh, this map is definitely one of the trickier ones. It's definitely not on the tier of something like, say, Varrot, for example, but it's definitely still a bit more challenging just because, as you can see, like, it's a very narrow map. Like, if you get caught in a hallway with a zombie and your weapon isn't reloaded, you're probably gonna go down. One thing I'd also like to mention is the fact that this is probably the most beautiful remastered map in Zombies Chronicles. Like, while sure, yes, all of the maps in that Zombie Chronicles pack look absolutely amazing, uh, Shangri-La is definitely, like, hands down the best one. It just, it looks so good in that game. Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that, oh gosh, oh, that, that, that's actually another thing that this map added is the monkeys. So basically, anytime that you get a drop, the monkeys can steal your drops, and then they try to take it back to Pack-a-Munch, and in this instance, oh wait, no, they're not gonna be, we got a double points out of it. So basically, anytime you get a drop, 
the monkeys will try to come and steal it, which you can kind of manipulate it to work in your advantage. So say that, I don't know, the zombies drop like a nuke or a carpenter, and that's not exactly what you're looking for. Well, you can wait for the monkeys to come and pick it up, and then as it's cycling through the drops, they can change it to, you know, literally anything else, like a double points or an insta-kill or a max ammo or just, you know, anything that would be more useful than a carpenter. Let's just take in the fact that this map is literally like 12 years old, and yet it's still just gorgeous here's one of the new zombies right here the shrieker and screams at you it got me down this is what i get for trying to make a video you know i was trying to take it slow and just you know try to look at the model of the shrieker so you guys could see what it looks like but then i ended up going down and paying the consequences for it anyway as you can see it's like the zombie right here it's pretty cool it's a shrieky thing uh yeah it screams and it blurs your screen that's literally all that it does it can also stun the zombies which i guess you could also use to your advantage in some way but i don't know i just find those to get in the way more than anything then there's also the napalm zombies which i'm sure we'll see soon enough those zombies they're basically what they sound like they're napalm they come they they're fiery they explode they leave fire on the floor definitely something you want to have phd for i'm not taking any chances i'm buying juggernaut immediately yeah but this is the one room i was talking about you know sometimes you want to go in a very particular direction but then you know you can't walk across here because it's all swampy and stuff and then sometimes when you walk on these platforms it doesn't exactly take you where you're trying to go and it just leads you in circles and you loop around i am just trying to get back to the other side of the thing but everything is blocked oh no i cannot take any chances right now well the bridge didn't want to work properly and take me where i was trying to go so now i guess i'm just gonna have to buy a bunch of doors and run around the map i've always really liked this area too like this waterfall like oh that is literally desktop wallpaper material right there oh my god i'm not are you are you kidding me this is why this map is so divided like i couldn't see there was water i couldn't move zombie swat like it, it do you understand why some people don't really like this map like i said earlier in the video personally i do like this map but i can completely empathize with and understand why some people don't really like this map as much it definitely has the potential to be more annoying than fun sometimes it always really annoys me when this happens because you know i've only been recording for like 20 minutes at this point and that's obviously not enough footage for a whole video so now i'm at this weird point where it's either I end the video early, or I go back through and try to play another match. But then at that point, I already lost a good bit of my willpower. So my only goal at this point is to at least try to show off the Wonder Weapon or Pack a Punch or something like that. I'm just thankful that I never set myself up any like particular round goals in these videos. Otherwise, it would take so much longer to get made. Don't get me wrong, I could totally hit round 20 on any of these maps. But when I'm commentating and I'm trying to play at the same time and I'm trying to like show off certain features of the maps, I just I tend to screw up a lot more than I normally would. I was saying it in the last episode. So, but you know usually when i play these maps i just i kind of get set up real quick i get jug immediately and then i go to my training spots as soon as possible and then i just kind of rack up the money and gradually set up as i get enough money to do so but obviously when i'm making these videos it's a bit different hey look at that the box is in the same location as last time one thing worth noting is that in the zombie chronicles version of this map you can also get the ray gun mark II. why like i just don't understand what i did to deserve this i'm just trying to make some friendly nostalgic zombies content and i'm being punished for it it's crazy that we're almost at the end of the black ops one segment of this series already it feels like we were literally just starting world of war like a couple days ago but here we are after this obviously we only have After this, we'll just have to cover Moon, and then obviously we'll be on the Black Ops 2 with Transit and all that. I, I have a feeling the Black Ops 2 segment of the series is going to be interesting, because I have some hot takes. A lot of what I have to say about Black Ops 2 will definitely probably be blasphemy among, you know, the zombies community, but it is what it is. I'm definitely excited to see what the reactions to those videos are going to be. All right, at this point, I'm literally on game number three. I think I've proven that I am absolutely terrible at this map. If I'm going to be honest, I haven't played as much of the BO1 version as I have of, of even, like, the BO3 version. Version. I played this map a decent bit back at launch and then moon came out and that whole DLC pack with all the world of war maps came out And I just you know, I'd never really revisited Shangri-La too much after that and then between black ops 1 and black ops 3 I probably played Shangri-La like, you know, maybe enough times to count on both hands and Then after that I didn't play it a whole lot But then when it came out in zombies chronicles, I actually played a lot of Shangri-La and zombies chronicles But at the very least you would expect at least some of those skills and some of that knowledge to transfer over here But apparently not. All right, it seems like the box is down there by the 
waterfalls. Boom, here we are at the mystery box. Unfortunately, I literally have zero points to my name. Man, this is the same spot that I went down last. I do not want to go down in the exact same spot again. If I do, though, it's not really my fault. Okay, you got this thing that slows you down and blurs your vision, and then you're obviously slower in the water. Oh, and another thing worth noting that this map, I I, I want to say brought back. They kind of sort of brought it back from Shinonuma, where, like, the perks are randomized. However, it's not every single perk that's randomized like it was in Shinonuma. Instead, it's just a couple of them, like Speed Cola can either be here or can be Juggernaut. Personally, I prefer when perks are just kind of stationary maps, like you know where the perk is going to be. I feel like it kind of helps with the identity of the perks and the map as well. Like, say, Origins, for example, the perks in that map aren't random. So when you think Jug, you immediately think, okay, Gen 4, the tight little death trap that is Juggernaut. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it adds to the identity and everything like that of the map and the perk. Whereas when I say, okay, Speed Cola and Shinonuma, your mind just goes, oh, okay, it's uh, one of the huts and you only get like a very vague and general image in your head of what I'm talking about. I know it's a small thing, but for me, those small things matter. All right, mystery box. Now, if I could please get something besides like a ballistic knife. Oh God, an HS10. I mean, I'm on round three, so I'll take just about anything, but like I'd really prefer the JGB. I'm gonna spin this thing a few times and hope that I get lucky. I love the weapons and the weapon variety in Black Ops 1, but if I'm gonna be honest, the only thing that ruins it for me when it comes to Black Ops 1's guns is the fact that all the guns have like next to no ammo. I've said it quite a couple of times now throughout, you know, the Black Ops 1 section of this series, but like seriously, the only weapons that have like even a decent amount of ammo in zombies, at least in Black Ops 1. Like, how? It's like the Galil, the Commando, and the LMGs, and, you know, maybe some of the Wonder Weapons, like the Ray Gun, but that's about it. Really. Ooh, and the AUG. The AUG actually has quite a good amount of ammo, and it's really satisfying. This is one of my favorite weapons of Black Ops 1. I've, I don't know why. I've just always loved the AUG. Something about the way that it feels, the way that it controls, it's just, it's a really nice gun. And the scope on it. I've always really liked the scope for some reason. All right, Mystery Box. Now, if you could please give me the JGB, I would seriously appreciate- Whoa, I just got hit twice and I survived somehow. And I'm dead. And, well, the box only gave me a galil anyway, so it is what it is. Anyway, I apologize for my terrible zombie skills in this video. I promise I'm normally not this bad. It's just, it's something about when I go to record a video, any zombie skill that I've acquired over the last 15 years just kind of disappears. I'd definitely love to hear from you guys down in the comments, you know. What do you think about this map? Do you like this map? Do you not like this map? Do you have any fond memories or nostalgia for this map? Whatever it is, whatever you're thinking, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. Anyway, as always, a shout out to the Patrons and channel members, Carmen's Figure, I'm a little bit of tab, big dynamite, each Lupus, Rex, Ray, Zach, Polar, Ray, DeWeb, Shirley, Lamas, Bianca, Spriggs, Horge, Upsant, Malosky, and Kudu, Mad, Benson, and Rinch, Wife, the Team, Flemis, and One, Aaron Reynolds, Unknown, and Christopher Huerta. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.